All right, what's up, everyone? So let's do these next notes here. These next notes are conditional statement notes. So label that on your paper, right? Or whatever. All right, so conditional statement notes. <clears throat> We're going to be going over conditional statements and their parts. After this, we should be able to do the hypothesis, the conclusion from conditional statements, the truth value from conditional statements. We write the statement into conditional statements, the converse, the inverse, and contrapositive. You should be able to write those. Identify the relationship between those four, the converse, inverse, contrapositive, and the, the regular statement. And we're going to use Venn diagrams as well. So we'll go right here. If you don't clean your room, then you can't go to the movies. Perhaps you've heard that before, or statements like that. If this, then that. Right? Those are conditional statements. It says that conditional statements are important in math because of the postulates and the theorems we will learn are written as conditional statements. For instance, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. A conditional is an if-then statement. Each condition has two parts. We have the hypothesis, which is the if, and the conclusion, which is the Q, as they call it, the hypothesis. So the hypothesis is what's written after the word if. The conclusion is what's written. after the word then okay, very important so hypothesis is after the word if conclusion is after the word then so it says right here if two angles form a line then they are a linear pair. If two angles form a line, then they are a linear pair. That's just a simple statement, right? Well, I'm not asking you to tell me what is true or false here. We're just working on the statement. So an example one, I want you to identify the hypothesis. The hypothesis. And the conclusion, right? of the linear pair postulate given above. The hypothesis. The hypothesis is everything written after the word if. So after the word if, it says right there. So everything after the word if, before the word then. So it would be two angles. Form a line. Now the conclusion is the green one. The hypothesis is the yellow one. I'll fix that a little bit. Anyway. So remember the conclusion is everything after the word then. So this one's the if and this one is the then. Okay? After the word then is the conclusion, which is they are a linear pair. They are a linear pair. Now, <clears throat> now we're going to get into the symbols. Okay, symbols and diagrams of the conditional statement. So let's get into this real quick. So it says, consider the following example. If you live in Harlingen, then you live in Texas. 
if you live in Hardingen. And then remember, stop after the word if, I mean, after the word, you go after the word if all the way to the word then. So stop there. And that would be another color, or that's <clears throat> another part of your conditional statement. <clears throat> So the hypothesis is the letter P, okay? Hypothesis is the letter P, and conclusion is the letter Q. I remember that <coughs> the hypothesis is everything after the word if. So it would be you live in Harlingen. The conclusion is everything after the word then, so then it would be you live in Texas. Okay? So it would be if P, then Q. So we write it as P to Q. That's the way it's written. So when you see P to Q, it means if P, then Q. That's what it means. So we're not going to write down the word if and then anymore. It's just going to be if, pen, e, if P, then Q. That's just the way it's uh, it's... We say it, all right? So keep that in mind. Now for the diagram, the Venn diagram, circle with a smaller circle. That's the P, that's the Q. So when we say if P then Q, well, the P part goes inside the smaller circle and the Q is the bigger circle, right? So for the question here, if you live in Harlingen, then you live in Texas. So we drew a big circle for that. The smaller circle inside would say, would be the P. And what's the P here? You live in Harlingen. So I put Harlingen. And then Q is the big circle, and Q was you live in Texas, so I'll put Texas here. Right? And that's how it's written. That's how you do Venn diagrams of it. So the try it part, this, that's for you to try. Try to identify the hypothesis and conclusion. So I want you to write down hypothesis. Conclusion, and I want you to write them out. Okay. I'm writing a conditional statement. We can rewrite a statement so that it reads as a conditional. What do you mean? It means that we can rewrite our statements as if then statements. Whatever your statement is, you can say if then that, or if that then this. So example two says, a rectangle has four right angles. How do you write that as an if-then statement? How do you write that a rectangle has four right angles as if this, then that? Well, if a shape is a rectangle, comma, so then I put, there's my if. If a shape is a rectangle, then what? Then then what? It has four right angles. It has four right angles. If a shape is a rectangle, then it has four right angles. You see how we made this statement into an if-then statement? Okay, that's what it means to rewrite it as a conditional statement. Because a conditional statement means if-then, okay? So example three says, a tiger is a mammal. How do you write that as an if then statement? You can't just say, if you have a tiger, then it's a mammal. It doesn't make sense if you write it in English. If you have a, what do you mean if you have a tiger? It doesn't make sense. If what is a tiger? So then you could say, if an animal is a tiger, if an animal is a tiger, then what? Then it is a mammal.
Okay. So to rewrite the conditional statement, you're trying to make it fit into an if this, then that statement. So it would make sense for you. To try it, you're going to do it here for the square one and the layer for cons. We'll check that later. So you try it by yourself. Now the next one says to find the, the truth value of a conditional statement. Now we're going to see like, is that statement true or false? And we work like that. So it says to show that a conditional is true. You have to show that every time the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is true. You can have a counter example. That help you to figure out if something is true. And to show something is false, you just find one counter example for it. And that means that the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. Now it's kind of confusing, so let me just go into an example and I'll show you what it means. So it, what it means is this. If it's if it's if the if if the if part is true and the then part is true, then the whole thing is true. It's called a truth table. All right. So, first, it says, is the conditional true or false? If it is false, find a counterexample. Remember, a counterexample says, like, no, that's not true. Look, let me give you an example showing you why it's not true. But if it's true, then you put down true. Example four. If a number is divisible by three, then that number is odd. It means that if you have a number that you can divide by three, that number is odd. For all the numbers, even though it doesn't say for all the numbers, it means for all the numbers. So let's see. What numbers are divisible by three? All right, so a number that you can divide by three, that's divisible by three. So let me pick a number like uh, 15. 15. Can I divide 15 by 3? Yeah, I get 5. Is 15 even or odd? Oh, that's odd. Okay, so then that means it's true, right? I don't know. Think of another number. Can we find a number that you can divide by 3, but that number is not odd? Mm, think about it. You think about it, and you'll, you there's many of them. You could do 6. Can you divide 6 by 3? Yeah, you get 2. 6. Is 6 even or odd? Six is even. And you see how it said it had to be odd? Since you found an example that was even, you found a counter example. So a counter example we use a false. Six. <clears throat> is divisible by three. But even. Right. And there's many more you could do. There's 12. 12 is also divisible by 3, but 12 is a uh, 12 is also even. So just other examples, right? But all you need is one. As long as you find one, then there you go. Number five. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. What's some definitions here? Linear pair means that two angles. Add to 180 degrees because I make a line. Two angles make a line. And a line equals 180 degrees. That's what it means. Okay. Supplementary. Supplementary means that we have two angles that equal 180 degrees. So if two angles are a linear pair, that means that they're two angles that make a line which equal 180 degrees. Then are those two angles supplementary? And supplementary means that two angles are equal to 180. Is that a true statement or a false statement? It's true because if two lines, if two angles make a line and that's 180, and supplementary means that it means two angles are equal to 180, then it's true. We can't, you can't find something false for this, which means that this is a true statement. <clears throat> there's your try it you try it the month has 30 days and it's september okay if it's true then that means there's no that means that the month of september only has 30 days that's it there's no other month that has 30 days if you can find another month that has 30 days 
And then you'll say false because blah, 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 another month. And then what month is it? Whatever you say. Negation. <clears throat> the negation of a statement P is opposite of the original statement. This symbol here is very important. It's just like a little switch line P. That means not P. This is equal to not P. Pretty much you put the word not in front of it. And that's it. So right here. State the negation of the statement. The sky is green. How do you make this negate? How do you add the word not to it? Well, it means the sky is not green. Now do the negation of this statement. I am not going to the dance on Friday. What's the opposite of you're not going to the dance on Friday? You're in, if you're already not going to go, but you're going to do the opposite of that, well, then you are going to the dance on Friday. All right. What about these big boys here? Converse. Inverse and contrapositives. <clears throat> okay. The conditional is the original one. That just means if P then Q. This is just the, the original. This is if P then Q. That's just the original one. Nothing. Everything we've been doing. The example here says if M is equal to 100. So if the measure of angle A is 100, then angle A is obtuse. That's the P and that's the Q. Remember that, okay? Now, for the converse, it means Q, then P. What do you mean? Well, instead of writing the, the P first, you're going to write the Q first. So, you flip. The P and Q. Flip the P and the Q. So, right here, it's going to say, if... It always starts with if, right? But instead of writing P first, you're going to write down the Q first. So you're going to write down if angle A is obtuse. You're just flipping this around. That's all you're doing. If angle A is obtuse, then the measure of angle A is 100. So we just flip them around, right? That's what we did here. That's how you find <clears throat> the converse. Okay. Now the inverse. Means not P, not Q. Now remember that the original statement has P and Q. It's always P and Q. So this still has P and Q. So you're not going to flip them around. You're going to leave them alone. But you're going to put, see the little squiggly line? The little squiggly line means you're going to put the word not. So keep the same order. But add the word not. So we're going back to the original statement. This is the original statement. That's the original statement. That's what we're going back to all the time. That's the original one. So keep it in the exact same order, except put the word not. Let me show this real quick. This is the zero.
So now I had the the green went there and my yellow went over here, right? Obtuse. Anyways, this one over here, you're gonna keep it the same. So yellow is still gonna go first. It's gonna say if, and you're gonna write this, except you're gonna put down the word not. So you can't put if not M, angle A equals 100 degrees. You're gonna put, how do you put this to say not? What's the opposite of the angle of A equals 100 degrees? If the angle equals 100, what's the opposite of equal 100? It doesn't equal 100. So then you put that the measure of angle A, you can put is not equal to if you want to. That's what that symbol means. Is not equal to 100 degrees, then angle A, now, if it is obtuse, how do you say that it's not? Then you say it's not obtuse. The angle A is not obtuse. So again, put the word not on both of them, okay? So keep the same order. Keep the P first, keep the Q second. Just put the word not in them both. Now the contrapositive, the last one. The contrapositive is to flip them around and put the word not. Okay, so flip them and put the word not. Flip order and put not. So back to the original statement. So we're gonna flip them around. So it's gonna be if, except we're gonna flip them around. So now the green part's gonna go first. Except you're gonna put not. If it is obtuse, how do you say not? You say it's not obtuse. If angle A is not obtuse, right? And then you're gonna write the yellow part now because you flip the order and put the word not. If it equals 100, how do you say it doesn't equal 100? You put that it's not equal to 100 degrees. And the measure of angle A is not equal to 100. Okay. Don't lose that table. This chart here helps you a lot. So some examples here. So here's our original statement. If it is raining, then the ground is wet. That P, that's Q. Remember, converse, converse means Q to P. That just means just to flip them. So then it's going to be if, flip them around, if the ground is wet, then it's raining. Inverse means not P, not Q. So keep the same order, just put the word not. So, if it is not raining, then the ground is not wet. Now the contrapositive. Not Q to not P. So flip them around and put the word not. So if... So flip them around, so this Q has to go first, but put, 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 put the word not, if the ground is not wet, if the ground 
is not width. Then write the first one, but not. It is not raining. Then it's not raining. This is yours to try it. You write down the converse, inverse, contrapositive of this statement here. Now, real quick. Let's see, let's see which one's true or whatever, real quick. If it's raining, the ground is wet. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Converse. If the ground is wet, then it's raining. Is that the only time the ground could be wet? No, what happens if someone just threw a bucket of water on there? What happens if someone has a sprinkler on? So then that's false. Inverse. If it's not raining, then the ground is not wet. If it's not raining, then the ground is not wet. No, because someone, again, could just put a spill some water from a, a mop bucket or a sprinkler could be on. Contrapositive. If the ground is not wet, then it's not raining. If the ground is not wet, then it's not raining. That's true. All right, so now we have to do this. Try it here. Now here's a little thing here. Just a statement here. This is an example. It's already in your notes, right? So you don't have to write it down. It says conditional statement. If the measure of angle A is 15, then it's acute. That's true. If it's yeah, 15 degrees is acute. That is true. If you flip it around, if you say that angle A is acute then angle A is 15, that doesn't make sense because if you have an acute angle, couldn't you have 10 degrees or 30 or 40 or 50, right? That's why it's false. It says if the measure of angle A is not 15, then it's not acute. That's false because it could be 10 degrees in it and then it would be um, acute. That would be a counterexample, right? And then contrapositive says if angle A is not acute, then there's no way it can be 15 degrees. That's false. That, you know what I mean? That's true because if you don't have an acute angle, then you can't have 15. But right here it tells you the thing. That's not what I found. The conditional always equals the contrapositive. And the converse is always equal to the inverse. That's what this says. Okay? See? Conditional and contrapositive are always equivalent statements. They're both either true or they're both e either false. I mean, they don't always have to be true, right? They can be false. False, of course. And then the converse and the inverse are also equivalent statements. That means they're equal. Okay. And that's it for the for these notes. Don't forget to do the, all, all of the triads. Do all of those so we can go over them in class if we need to. All right, laters.